Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and I wasn't expecting to do this today, but um, I'm responding 15 seconds into this video, Abortion and Personhood, What the Moral Dilemma is Really About by Glenn Cohen with Big Think. 15 seconds in, he talks about how Roe versus Wade granted women the right to an abortion. And that is... I think it's inadvertent. I don't think he realizes exactly what he's saying, but the way Roe v. Wade has been interpreted by the abortion lobby and all of their adjuncts, their media lap dogs, the bureaucrats, the politicians, is that the woman has a right to an abortion. Now, they'll use right to choose, right to choose, right to choose, but you look and whenever they say make a choice or choose, the choice always is abortion. They never tell these stories about how the woman was in a difficult situation and decided to keep the baby because that's not what it's about for them. It's about the abortion happening. And there are a couple ways we can see this. One is the attack on pro-life pregnancy centers, which Elizabeth Warren is wanting to ban them nationwide. She wants to shut them down. Um, Ron Fitzsimmons is the original author of attacking the pro-life pregnancy centers and he was very honest at the time about why i mean i gotta give ron simmons credit for honesty it was the fact that these pregnancy centers were stealing abortion clients their bottom line was being hurt so you know you have to close them down and if you can't you need to demonize them and uh that's what they do very effectively. I don't know whether Elizabeth Warren believes the things she says. You know, she says, it's wrong to torture pregnant persons like that. And my response was, so yeah, you want to do the good torture, which is disemboweling them with forceps because you tried to grab part of the baby and you missed and shoved the forceps through the back of her uterus, pulled out a loop of bowel. That kind of torture is fine. That's good because choice. Um, so they want to cut off any access to anybody that can help the woman resolve her problem in a way that doesn't result in a dead fetus. You'll notice that they are rabidly opposed to informing women about abortion pill reversal. They don't want the woman to change her mind. Once she walks into the abortion clinic, their philosophy is she needs to follow through with the abortion. The only possible bad outcome is that she decides to have the baby. Um, and we got a couple other examples of that. One is the feminist handbook, My Body, it's Our Bodies and Ourselves, where one of the examples they gave of admirable abortion decision making was a woman who had an unplanned pregnancy and was actually happy about it and looking forward to having the baby. But her friend said that that would be letting the baby choose when she became a mother and that that was wrong. She had to have an abortion and then deliberately become pregnant if she was happy about the idea of having a baby right now. And then there's Douglas Carpin, who I heard at a National Abortion Federation meeting. I listened to years and years of tapes of National Abortion Federation meetings. Um, Carpin complaining that the pro-lifers outside the clinic were stealing his patients. They'd go in, they'd have the laminaria inserted. Those are little seaweed sticks. They absorb moisture, they expand, they get the uh, cervix dilated so you can get the fetus out without ripping the woman's cervix to shreds. And they would go through whatever counseling Carpin's clinic provided. They would actually be certain enough about their procedure to climb on the table for step one, but they'd go outside, talk to a bunch of strangers, change their minds. Um, the pro-lifers would pay for, you know, the woman to go to a hospital or an OBGYN and get the laminaria taken out, and then the woman would want a refund. And Carpin was complaining about this. And instead of pointing out to him that his counseling obviously sucked, if women were changing their minds after the abortion procedure started. But instead of saying, well, obviously you need to, you know, up the game on your counseling, they said, well, the solution is to have her sign a contract agreeing that she will go through with the abortion. Do you see a pattern here? Um, it's very, very rare that you hear a pro-choice person complain about forced abortions or coerced abortions. I'll give Hillary Clinton credit on one occasion, she did speak out against the forced abortions in China. One occasion. I can't recall any other pro-choice people speaking up against it. In fact, they praise the International Planned Parenthood Federation, which provides people to help China implement their one-child policy. Um, I've heard of one pro-choice politician 
that had a beef with bullying women into aborting babies that had a diagnosis of Down syndrome. And I think this is because uh, Ted Kennedy's sister was intellectually disabled. Their family therefore became big advocates for people with intellectual disabilities. His sister founded Special Olympics. And so he was part of a group that, I can't even remember if the bill passed or not, saying that you had to give women accurate information about a prenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome and not paint this gloomy picture that their baby was not going to be able to have any kind of realistic life. But by and large, the abortion movement is about a right to an abortion. Not a right to help resolve your distress, not a right to have your financial situation alleviated, to be um, rescued from a sex trafficking ring. The right is to an abortion. And uh, I think that's very, very telling.